بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه واتبع هداه وبعد اللهم أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وافتح علينا بمعرفة العلم وحسن أخلاقنا بالحلم اللهم أمين أعرف أن الجميع مجهد نسأل الله تعالى أن يتقبل منا ومنكم أجمعين في ناس يمكن موجودة معنا من من صلاة التراويح لم تذهب إلى بيوتها بعد أو ذهبت دقائق معدودات من المغرب إن شاء الله طيب ولذلك هنختصر في هذه الخاطرة بإذن الله تحدثنا في لقاءات ماضية عن أسباب استمراء الناس للمعاصي وذكرنا منها في اللقاءين الماضيين أن بعض الناس بتستمر في طريق المعصية لأنهم يستعظمون الذنب ويظنون أن الله لن يغفر لهم لأن ذنبهم كبير فيأسوا ويقنطوا في بعض الناس على العكس من ذلك تستمر في المعاصي اعتمادا على سعة رحمة الله تقول له توب يا عم وارجع لربنا يقول لك ربنا غفور رحيم صحيح ربنا غفور رحيم لكن هو قاعد يذنب ويقول ربنا غفور رحيم ده الغلط ولذلك الله عز وجل يقول وإذا نبئ عبادي أني أنا الغفور الرحيم وأن عذابي هو العذاب الأليم وبعدين في فرق بين الرجاء والتمني في فرق بين الرجاء والتمني كما يقول ابن عطاء رحمه الله تعالى الرجاء ما قارنه عمل وإلا فهو أمنية وإلا فهو أمنية والإمام الغزالي بيقول من يذنب وينتظر العفو يعني بدون توبة كمن يتوقع النهب في بلد في بلده ثم ترك ذخائر أمواله في في صحن الدار وهو قادر على دفنها ولم يفعل انت عارف ان في واحد هيقتحم البيت وفيه كنز في البيت وانت سايبه في في المواجهه وانت قادر على دفنه هل يقال ان هذا انسان عاقل او عنده حسن ظن لا ده مش حسن ظن ده بالعكس ده اسمه غرور ولذلك قالوا حسن الظن انما يكون مع انعقاد اسباب النجاه يعني واحد بيحب حابب ان ربنا يغفر له فجيه من المغرب لحد الفجر قاعد يقول اللهم اغفر لي يبقى ده يرجو رحمه الله ومغفرته بخلاف واحد نايم وبيقول ربنا يغفر لي دي اسمها امنيه ولذلك في فرق بين الامنيه هذه اللي قاعد يذنب ويقول ربنا غفور رحيم ده اسمه غرور ولذلك نختم بكلام الحسن رحمه الله تعالى يقول إن قوما ألهتهم أماني المغفرة حتى خرجوا من الدنيا بغير توبة يقول أحدهم إني لأحسن الظن بربي وكذب لو أحسن الظن لأحسن العمل والحمد لله أنتم أحسنتم العمل في هذه الليلة فنسأل الله تعالى أن يحقق رجاءنا ورجاءكم في المغفرة والعتق من النيران اللهم أمين وجزاكم الله خيرا أجمعين الله يبارك فيك يا سيدي نخرج بطمأنينة وتؤدى يا شباب الله يبارك فيكم جميعا حتى تتم الترجمة في معاملنا كانوا بيقولوا كده زمان طيب آه Few days ago, we have been talking about the reasons why why some people persist in committing sins. And just to keep it short, because I know uh, many of you are very tired by now. You have been here from maybe Maghrib or Taraweeh until Fajr, and you did a great job. And the khatira is related to something like that. So we'll try to make it as short and brief as possible. So we have been talking about the reasons why people persist in committing sins. And uh, in the last two days, we were discussing that reason, which is uh, thinking that your sin is too big to be forgiven by Allah. Thinking that Allah will not forgive you. 
So you give up and you continue sinning. And we talked about how to deal with this problem. Today we're talking about the opposite. Sometimes some people may persist in committing sins because they think that Allah is too merciful and he will take care of whatever they are doing. If you ask them, come back to Allah, they say, Allah is the all-forgiving, the all-merciful. Allah will forgive. It is true that Allah will forgive, but you cannot continue committing sins and then say Allah will forgive because that is a wish, it's not hope. There is a huge difference between hope and wish. You hope for forgiveness. Hope is usually accompanied by action. Wish may not be accompanied by action. So, for example, if you're having or facing an exam uh, in a particular course you're taking in a school and you have not studied the material, you can only wish for an A on the exam. But if you, in fact, seriously studied the material, you can hope for an A. So there is a huge difference between a wish and a hope. So don't be uh, deluded by this idea that Allah will forgive and you persist in committing sins. Because that is a wish, it's not hope. Uh, Imam al-Ghazali compared the person who keeps committing sins and refuses to go back to Allah thinking that Allah will forgive anyway. Uh, he compares that person to someone who knows for sure that a, a burglar uh, will be breaking into his house soon and he knows that there is a treasure in the house and he left the treasure in the house even though he can hide it, he can take it with him but he left it thinking that the uh, uh, thief will not take it. So this is not good thinking. This is not uh, thinking good of that person. So basically, when we're talking about uh, Allah, gaining Allah's forgiveness, it has to be accompanied by your action, by showing a sincere desire that you hope for forgiveness, not just wish for forgiveness. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, combine these two together. Tell my servants that I am the all-forgiving, the all-merciful. And my punishment is the most painful. So we need to create that balance. Because the way you, uh, you deal with sins and understand it would influence the way you make moral decisions in life. So I keep stressing the idea on how to manage this problem of sinning and the thoughts associated with sinning. I'll close with this quote from Al-Hasan, one of the great spiritual masters in Islam. He said, Some people were uh, uh, distracted uh, by the wishes for forgiveness so long that they departed from this life without making a sincere repentance. Some of them would say, I am thinking well of my Lord. But they lied. If they really thought well of their Lord, they would have behaved differently. So again, differentiate between a wish for forgiveness and hope for forgiveness. What you did today is hoping for forgiveness. You could have been spending the night somewhere else, doing the haram and engaging in haram. But in order to ask for forgiveness, you spend the night in complete union with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is an example of hoping for forgiveness. So make sure that you always hope for forgiveness, not just wish for forgiveness. Wallahu ta'ala a'ala wa a'lam wa jazakumullahu khairan ajma'in.